They say the salt life is the life. Definitely work for Jimmy Buffett. But how well does it work for your boat? Should you buy a boat that has been in salt water if you're boating in fresh water? On today's video, we're gonna go over that. We're gonna talk about whether it's a good idea or not. And if you do, what kinds of things do you wanna make sure are in place before you do? And some tips and tricks for you to determine whether a boat has been in salt water. So firstly, let's talk about whether you should or not. Most boats in the world actually are saltwater boats and they work perfectly well there. So boating in salt water is not uncommon at all. It really comes down to the same thing with any used boat and that is how was it taken care of. If a customer owned a boat in salt water and it was really well maintained, flushed out after every run, the salt water was rinsed off of it and washed properly, ideally covered so that it doesn't have any sun damage, then the answer is maybe, because really there's no difference between a well-maintained saltwater boat and a well-maintained freshwater boat, as long as the saltwater has been flushed out of all components every time they're being used. The reality is though, not everybody takes care of their boat like we would hope they would. So there are going to be some detrimental effects. There are going to be potentially issues with corrosion in the engine, corrosion in electrical components. There could be issues with fittings and hardware corroding more quickly. Definitely when you go to do repairs and maintenance, sometimes fasteners are very hard to remove. And so by and large, you're going to find that maintaining a saltwater boat is more expensive than maintaining a freshwater boat. So if you do go to buy one, you're going to expect to pay less than you would for the exact same boat that you know has lived its whole life on fresh water. So if you took an identical 2010 Sea Ray 25 footer, that one was used in Lake Michigan and one was used in Fort Lauderdale, you could expect to pay up to 40 to 50% less for the Florida boat than the Lake Michigan boat. There are deals to be had out of there, and that's why you do see saltwater boats in freshwater environments. It's because A, someone moved to that area, brought their boat with them, and now has traded it or sold it privately, or B, someone has decided that it would be a good idea to get a deal on a boat because it is less expensive to buy a saltwater boat, and then either ship it to a freshwater environment or even import it into a different country. So they are out there. If you decide to go ahead and buy one, make sure you are definitely paying well below what the market value in your area is for that given boat and that you're prepared and know that you're gonna have an increased cost for maintaining and repairing that boat over time and probably a few more headaches. So if you're willing to take that risk, then you can find good value in saltwater boats. So now, you've decided that you may or may not want. Maybe you are okay with one and it doesn't matter. And if you aren't okay with a saltwater boat, let's figure out some ways for you to identify them. Firstly, if you're buying a boat from a dealer and they're reputable, they should tell you where the boat came from if they can figure it out. Or you may be buying it from someone private and they will tell you. Ideally, the transparency is in a perfect world is you'll know the history of where that boat came from. If they don't tell you that or they don't know, here are some other things that you can do. Look for where the registration is. If a boat is or was registered in Florida or British Columbia or California or New York, there is a possibility, although no guarantee, that it was used in salt water. Look for things like decals for either the marina where it was purchased from, the area in which it's boated, so maybe a pass for a lock system ramp or something in an area you might find on the windshield. Look carefully for things like shadows of other license numbers. You may see a boat that says ON and you think it's Ontario, but if you look really carefully at the gel coat, you can see where there was a shadow of a FF or a Florida license. Take a really good look around the boat for those kinds of hints. And then there are some really obvious ones too, like extra corrosion around fittings. If you see rust coming down from covers from a snap, bolts that are through hull, you will know that it's probably seen salt water. And why that is, is that in a freshwater environment, you may get a little bit of rust from time to time, but if you see it consistently around the boat on all the areas that have stainless steel or other metals, that is definitely a good indicator. You may also wanna take the serial number of the drive or engine and take it to a Mercury, Yamaha, or Volvo, or whatever the engine is, and have them run that serial number. They can tell you where that boat was originally sold from, 
what marina and what customer it was originally registered to when it was new. And even though that won't tell you for sure it was used in salt water, it's also another good indicator. When you're shopping for a used boat, ideally the person selling it or the dealership will tell you whether it's been in salt water or not and you'll be able to trust them. If they don't know or they don't tell you, you're going to have to really turn into a detective and you're going to have to look for small clues for whether the boat was used in salt water or not. And once you do determine that, you'll have to decide whether it's worth the risk or not. Make sure you're paying less and make sure you are okay with having a little bit more time in the shop and a little bit more expense when you're doing your maintenance and repairs. Check out this video here on some other used boat problems that you're going to want to avoid. Thanks for joining us in today's Lens Cove Lessons in Boating and make sure you like this video and subscribe for more. Thanks very much and we'll see you out on the water.